we're going to talk about minimizing final time in dynamic optimization where we're going to minimize time final subject to certain constraints now this shows up in many different places for example if we want to build something and we're in a manufacturing process and there are many steps maybe in order to sell our product our new product we want to minimize the time of each of these steps in order to be able to make the device uh, there's also in transportation you might have different routes or different ways you can drive a vehicle in order to arrive in a minimum amount of time so there are many different types of minimum time problems that we want to address so I'm going to share with you some ways to formulate this um, and we're going to cover this problem the Jennings problem which is an example of a minimum time final time problem okay so one of the ways that we can solve this uh, you know we can have our time adjust automatically and I'll show you how to do this to scale the values from for example 0 to 1 to 0 to final time now the way we do that is we take our differential equations and wherever we see the differential term we're just going to divide that by this final time so this original equation right here was simulated from 0 to 1 okay and then this one right here is going to be simulated from 0 to final time and that final time is going to contract or expand as we need it to so we can use fixed grid points but then use this uh, alternate formulation in order to be able to get an expandable or contracted uh, final time horizon okay so a lot of times we see differential equations in this form right here which is called the semi-explicit form now if you have that form then you can just divide it by final time and then bring final time over here onto the right side and then you're left with an equation that looks like that so we're going to apply that in the Jennings problem in this case we have a minimum final time and we're going to be adjusting the u values continuously between 0 and 1 is going to be our initial guess for the final time and then as final TF changes so let's say we increase TF or we decrease TF that's going to increase or decrease this uh, final time okay so we have a couple differential equations that we're going to use one two and three those are the differential equations that we're going to be using as the constraints for this problem and then we have a couple other constraints one is the initial conditions and this is for x1 x2 and x3 and then we have some final conditions as well for our dynamic optimization problem this is kind of where we want to arrive and in this case x2 at time final has got to equal zero and x3 at time final has got to equal zero as well now this is our actuator the thing that we can change uh, continuously from zero to time final and that is between negative two and two so we're going to use this uh, method of dividing by final time for all of our differential terms okay and then we'll just rearrange that slightly to put it into the form that we'll use to solve okay so this is the one that we're going to use uh, for solving this and what we'll do is set this up and solve it with Python so I'm going to move this over to the side here and okay so let me just move that over here and then we'll set this up we'll show you how to set up the code in Python as well and uh, you know just kind of talk through it I'll let notepad do the typing for me okay and so this one I'm just gonna save as um, this one is going to be Jennings dot py okay so first of all I'm going to uh, import numpy and import gecko and then I'll also import uh, matplotlib I'll create my first gecko model and then with define my number of time points which is going to be 501 I'm going to go between 0 and 1 with those 501 I'm going to define my time with my gecko model 
And then I'm going to go on to variables. These are going to be x1. And I'm going to get the initial condition, which is going to be pi divided by 2. And here is my second value, x2. Initial condition equals 4. And then x3, the value is going to be initially equal to 0. It needs to arrive at 0 in the end. So I'm going to set up this p value here, which is going to be zeros everywhere. And just at the end, it's going to be equal to 1. And so I define a new parameter with value p. And then I have my fixed value or feed forward variable. And this one's initially going to be equal to 1. This is the final time. And I put a lower bound of 0.1, an upper bound of 100. And then turning the status on gives that value to the optimizer to be able to adjust. Similarly, I'll set up a manipulated variable. This one can be adjusted everywhere in that time horizon between negative 2 and 2 and turn its status on as well. Let's go on to some equations. We're going to set up the very first one. Don't forget the double equal sign there. And you can see the time final on the right hand side. Here's my second one, which is x2. The derivative of x2 is equal to m dot cosine. You got to use the gecko cosine. And then you have the time final there as well. OK, and then here's my next equation, which is going to force the final constraints. Now you could set those equal to 0. Sometimes that causes degree of freedom problems. There's my objective function I'm going to minimize. And then I set up i mode equals 6. That's dynamic optimization. And then I'll solve it. And then I'll print the final solution, the final time. And that's just going to be tf. And I'll do value 0. OK, and then I'm going to scale my time values based on the final time, just so I can plot them. And it'll scale from 0 to final time. I'm going to create a new figure and include x1 and make that a black line with line width 2 and label it. And I'll just include a LaTeX label there of x underscore 1. Same with x2. I'm just going to make that a blue line. And same thing, just label it and then go on to x3. So I'm just building my plot right now, including a green dashed line. OK, same thing um, in terms of the remainder of that. OK, next, uh, this is going to be the, these are going to be the u values. These are the ones that can change throughout the time horizon. And then finally, I'll give it a legend. Just put it in the best location. Let it decide where to put it and give it an x label and a Y label. OK, and then I'll show the plot. OK, so that's it. Let's go ahead and run this. I'm not going to run it in Notepad++. Um, I'll go ahead and just run it with IDLE. You can run it with Spider or with other Python environments as well, like through a notebook, Jupyter Notebook. OK, so this is going to optimize these differential equations. And I'm going to do this with I, the IPOP solver. Took about two seconds, 2.2 seconds to solve. OK, so let's just look at this uh, solution and see if we agree with uh, what it's giving us. I'm going to go ahead and just put this in here just so I can write on it. OK, I'll close it out. And I'll just copy that here and back into, OK, back onto my page so that we can look at it and discuss the solution. OK, so here was the problem on the right. I'll make this maybe just a little bit bigger so we can see it. OK, so we were trying to minimize the final time. It came up with about 4.3, OK, 4.3 for the final time. And we were subject to the constraint where x1, the black line, um, is going to be equal to uh, basically the value of u. So this one, you can see it started off at a value of pi over 2. And then it's going to have a slope. It turned on for about you know, a little less than one second. But you can see the slope is going to be equal to uh, 2 there. OK, and then if we go on to the next one, here's the time final times cosine x1. And you can see that um, you know x2 is this blue line. It starts off here at 4. And it's going to try to get as fast as it can down to a value of 0 at the end. 
So that's really one of the limiting factors. This one already starts, x3 already starts at 0. But in order for x2 to get there, uh, the value of u has to turn on and then turn off again. And so you can see that one trending down to 0 as well. Okay, so uh, we see that the two final conditions are satisfied. And we saw that u stayed within, you know, between negative 2 and 2. So if we relax that constraint just a little bit, okay, so we can go in here and change this upper bound or lower bound on u. Let's say we did that to, you know, negative 5 to an upper bound of 5. Then the solution get should get even faster, okay, because we've relaxed the constraint. We had 4.31 seconds. Now it's 4.11, okay, or 4.12, so a little bit faster because it was able to go to a higher value initially and then back down to zero. Okay, so relaxing the constraints generally helps us uh, get there faster. This is an example of uh, minimizing the final time right there, uh, and we do that by time scaling. You know, dividing all of our derivative values by tf. And in this case, I was able to rearrange it, so I put those on the right-hand side of the equation. This is how you do it in Gecko. There's also some source code in MATLAB as well, if you'd like to solve it there. Along with a lot of other dynamic optimization course topics, just come to apmonitor.com do. And here you can find the source code for this under More Benchmarks. And I have a number of these small dynamic optimization problems. This one's going to be the minimized final time for the Jennings problem. And there you can see the content for this. And then if you scroll down, you'll also see the problem there in MATLAB and Python. And then this is the Gecko solution that we just ran through. So if you'd like to use this, just come down here and select the Git code. And then that'll give it to you in somewhat of a raw format. So it doesn't have all the syntax highlighting there. There's also a couple references here, like the read the docs, for Gecko's documentation. So I hope you enjoy Gecko, and I hope you enjoyed solving this final time problem.